Um, I wanted to just start off by asking you a little bit about what your views were on the entries as a whole. So, Sarah, if you could kind of share some thoughts on that. Yes, um, this was a very hard fought category. So, if you're a winner in this category, it is well received. Um, I think we were all surprised by the the variety, the breadth and depth, I think, of the um, entries in this particular category, um, from you know um, big to small appetizers. Um, you know, we really did have a very broad spectrum in terms of the um, entries that we had, and also the approaches as well, um, in terms of what we defined and what people called channel integration as well, which is quite interesting, and some um, very um, um, hard fought debates around that in terms of okay, context of effective channel integration, what are we looking for here? What really singles out those campaigns that um, really deserve recognition? Richard, what were your views on the papers that you saw? You had some quite uh, ardent views, I remember, about some of the ones in the yeah, category. I, I thought there were lots of brilliant campaigns. I think there were three that really stood out. So Churchill was a, a brilliant entry from Mediacom. Um, they recognised that insurance is a really dull category in many people's eyes, but actually the broader category, the broader kind of purpose of protecting people's loved ones, protecting things that people care about is much more motivating. So they um, invested a significant sum of money to fund uh, lollipop ladies uh, in Britain because the idea there was this is something they can tangibly do to reduce the volume of uh, children who are being injured in road traffic accidents. So I think that was a fantastic campaign as a way of turning what could have been uh, a slightly boring category in people's minds and something much more motivating. So that was a brilliant campaign built on a really powerful insight. There was also Lego, who was a fantastic entry from Universal McCann in Australia. So their insight was that um, a lot of the reason people love Christmas is building around family traditions and rituals, uh, things like baking, uh, undoing the presents, putting up the tree. But the, for putting up the tree in particular, the, the uh, decoration that people think finishes the uh, the process was almost universally thought of as a, as a star, yet in a slightly contradictory manner, no one uh, often had you know, a particularly special star they were putting on the tree. So their idea was they could create their own ritual, which was getting people to, to build um, Lego stars as a family and then put them up on the, on the tree. And they had a wonderful uh, integrated approach in which rather than having campaigns just trying to do one thing, they identified the three barriers and then had elements of the campaign that address each of them. So inspiring people to act, um, if, uh, supporting people who didn't quite know what to do, and then celebrating those who did entry. So again, um, a, a brilliant campaign, but I think for this particular award, stood out to the integration between those three, three prongs. Mm. And then the final uh, goal winner, which was amazing, was the North campaign. So they began their whole campaign with a huge survey which identified uh, a, a stat that's kind of stuck in the planners' minds which was 78% of people say they would be more attracted to their partner if they had the same taste profile. Now why I really like that is uh, I think we're, we're awash with information so most people who saw that stat would just see it, think it's more interesting and pass it over. What they did was build a whole campaign around it. So they got people together on blind dates. The only thing in common was their taste profile. They videoed those and created a huge amount of content. They got lots and lots of interest uh, about whether or not they would make it after that blind date. Um, so again, another great insight. But what made that I think, distinctive out of all the entries was the effort they put into the real-time optimization of the campaign. Um, the, 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 the sophistication of that, I think, put the PhD apart from some of the others. Thank you. Sarah, are there any that you'd like to talk about? The glass is gone at this point. I'm a meat eater, by the way, in terms of uh, profiles, so you can make that what you want to. <laughs> So, um, so I'm going to focus on some of the uh, silver 
campaigns. So, and I think um, a couple of broader observations um, before I go into this in terms of, I think what stands out amongst all of these is kind of the real key understanding of audience um, the insight that um, goes behind that and how that is then translated into a really effective um, channel integration strategy. And when we're looking for channel integration, it is around real integration where you're seeing a real multiplicative halo effect, real impact rather than just multiple channels just for the sake of it. So real smart channel integration in terms of how you're planning um, and implementing your media. Um, so I'm going to kick off with um, Airbnb. Um, so this is um, the Never a Stranger campaign. And um, it's exactly that. And it, it's a great piece of insight and really kind of understanding their audience in terms of, um, and also the barriers as well. To using Airbnb um, and you know as a visitor you're always a little bit scared around well okay who am I going to am I going to be able to trust them and it's really taking away from those kind of you know t removing those barriers and really thinking about it in terms of the positives and the more broader emotional impacts and the more fulfillment you get from going to an Airbnb than you would do from a let's say a, a standard hotel in terms of that friendship and you know, that's built up and the great relationships that develop um, and how welcoming most Airbnb uh, um, uh, you know, sort of, uh, people who rent out accommodation are to, um, to recipients. So um, that's just a little bit on that um, and some great integration and use of channels both um, digital and traditional in terms of um, channel integration there. Um, and then secondly, pay with blood. Mm -hmm. um, I never thought I would see Dracula and Romania in a, um, a campaign, but yes, so it was there and a connection between the two um, and kind of back to the brand. Real good, great understanding of the target audience again and a real great amplification idea um, on you know, a, a, a core event. So um, well commended there. And the last one, Smart Life. Um, which again showed a real connection between message and media, which I think is also another key point to really true um, great channel integration um, and really showing that through planning, through to information, implementation of what was a relatively small budget. So just to let everybody who's here tonight know, you will get a book of the night at the end of the evening which has all of the winners in them, just in case you're frantically trying to scribble things down. So they'll all be in there and they give some top line results as well. So I think the Airbnb campaign that you mentioned, they had like a brand perception uplift of 14%, so you know, quite a useful result. So in your... So in your opinion as judges, um, what do you think was perhaps maybe lacking in this year's papers that you felt kind of let them down in any way? We've talked about some of the highlights and some of the amazing ways in which the work was well and truly integrated. But um, if I can start with you, Sarah, um, and, and just if you could tell me what you think would improve papers, I think this might be useful for anyone who's thinking of entering the awards this year. So I think the hint is in the title of the category, effective child integration. So um, more, more, far more cause and effect um, in terms of really being able to illustrate that your channel plans were effective in delivering against your um, objectives. So um, I think that would really help and really kind of hard commercial benefits that um, were seen off the back of it. So better translation end to end in terms of really setting out key KPIs, how you measured against them at the end. I certainly agree with the point about there should be more emphasis on return on investment. I think many campaigns felt if they hadn't done econometrics, uh, what could they say? But actually, papers like Lego did a phenomenal job of showing, yes, there was an uplift in various different metrics, and then ruling out all the other alternatives to prove that it was uh, advertising. So that was a very good way of getting around that, that problem. And then the final thing I think people could do, which Churchill was an amazing example of, was be a bit more honest. Not that I was in any way saying any of the papers lied, but I think they airbrushed the truth, that they left out the problems and hurdles that every planner will know happen on campaigns. 
So Churchill was very open about the mistakes that were made, the problems they had, and then they told people about the solutions they used to come around those. Now, when we're advising clients, I think one of the main things we know as planners is that admitting a weakness makes you stronger. A lot of the world's best campaigns have shown that. You know, things like um, yeah. Ugly Stony, Skin Deep, VW, Guinness, Good Things Come to Those Away, Rich or Expensive. So if we know that's true in our professional lives, what we're advising clients, I think we should do that again when we're entering awards papers. It'll make them much, much more credible. Well, thank you both very much for coming tonight and sharing your views.